Hey, Robin Kurz here once again with the newest on MFlare 2.0 from Motion VFX. And after we took a basic look at MFlare in the last clip, this time around, we of course want to go a lot more in depth. Previously, we simply applied a standard preset and created a simple animation by keyframing some basic parameters. But let's say we like the animation, but are still unhappy with certain elements or colors of the existing flare and have maybe found a different flare preset that we like better after all. Well, if we just drag the new flare, let's say the direct sunlight flare to our clip, then all we would get is the old flare with animation and the new one on top of it without the animation. Not what I'm looking for, so I'll just undo it. So if I want to replace my current flare and preserve the animation, that's where the all new presets panel comes in. To access it, all we have to do is click the presets button on the panel we see at the bottom left of the viewer when the flare is selected in the inspector. The panel, which by the way, I can simply click and drag around the viewer if I need to. Once I click the presets button, the presets panel appears near instantly and inside Final Cut Pro. As opposed to the previous versions, the need for an external app has been eliminated. So any preset browsing or editing can now be done instantly and without leaving Final Cut, which is of course another superb improvement. Let's just run through the presets panel features real quick. Starting at the top, we have the classic close button to the left of the name and a pop-up menu to the right. Clicking on the menu reveals the various, technically speaking, themes. The same ones that we've already seen in the effects browser. So I can choose to either see all of the flare presets displayed or filter those belonging to the anamorphic, cinematic, off-screen, organic, or sci-fi themes or categories as they're called here. And if I've created my own category or categories, those of course would also show up. Last but not least, as I just mentioned, I can even set up my own new category for my own flares if I need one. Next to that, we have a little star which filters any and all flares that I've previously marked as a favorite. Since I haven't done that yet, none are displayed when I click it, but this is a superb way of getting back to flares I might decide to use more often without having to scroll through an endless list of other flares. As you can probably imagine, I can favorite a flare by simply clicking the same little star that we see at the top right of each preset's thumbnail. And at the far right, we have a little gear icon with which, once clicked, we can check the version we're running, check for updates, and set the interval for the autosave function from none to up to 10 minutes. Back in the presets panel, via the left arrow at the top right, we can scroll through the list of over 100 flares we have to choose from. And the cool thing about this is that if I happen upon a flare that I think may actually look better, or at least be a better starting point for what I'm looking for, Say, for example, under the organic theme, the direct sunlight preset that I was looking at earlier. Then all I have to do is select it. With that, my previous flare is not only replaced, but it also has preserved my existing animation. Very cool. Okay, but looking at my new flare, I'm thinking it could still use some tweaks. For one, I feel the light source or point is too bright compared to the rest. I could of course just go either to the brightness settings in the inspector or even use the brightness slider on the flare itself. But that obviously doesn't only lower the brightness of the source, but just as much the brightness of everything else. So how can I just edit an individual element of a flare? Yes, you guessed it, with the edit function. And at this point, there are two ways of accessing the edit panel. If the presets panel were not already open, we could simply click the edit button in the floating panel in the viewer. But since it is already open, we can just click this little slider icon at the bottom of the now presets window, which works out to the same thing. It switches us to the edit panel where the real fun begins. Let's take a quick look at its various buttons and options first too. Again, we have an X for closing the panel right above the elements list. Next to that, we have a flyout menu where I can either create and design an all new flare from scratch open an existing one, should I have saved it elsewhere other than my presets. Below that, I can have mflare open the folder in which my autosave files are stored, should I need to. I can add an element from elsewhere, save the current flare as whatever I want and wherever I want. If for example, I wanna share my brilliant creations with another mflare user, or last but not least, save the current flare directly into my presets, after which I can of course select it from the presets panel. On the right, 
above the parameters list, we have a little left facing arrow button that we can click. This collapses the preview window for our selected elements. This is great for when I want to reduce mflare screen real estate to just the necessary panels and information, namely the elements and the parameters. Since, as we'll see in a moment, I can just as well look at my viewer, seeing it reflects any and all changes I make to my flare directly in the context of my video in real time. Clicking the now right facing arrow, of course, opens it up again. And all the way at the top right, I have the same button we saw in the presets panel for the preference window. So in the left column is where the fun begins. Here we have the list of elements that are in our currently active flare. Scrolling through the list, we can see that in this case, there are a full 13 elements that make up this flare. Most are subtle, some less subtle. If I float my mouse over one of the elements, three buttons appear. With the top left, I can delete an element by clicking the little X. Clicking the top right, I can simply hide an element from the rendering without having to delete it. And the bottom right button allows me to duplicate any given element, should I want the same thing twice, but maybe with just a little variation. And should 13 elements actually not be enough, or you want to replace an existing one you maybe just deleted, then all you have to do is click the plus sign under the elements sidebar. With that, a new sidebar appears, offering me 10 different element types to choose from that I might want to add. All of which, of course, have unique characteristics. Say, for example, I want a streak. I simply click streak. And with that, mflare returns to my list and adds the selected element to the end of my list. Selecting an element loads it by itself into the center viewer and also loads all its parameters into the right column. And boy, are there a lot, but also not one too many. The level of control over the physics and look of your flare is just amazing. But the basic controls over size and rotation can be found for each element in the shape of this square in the middle of the viewer. With it, if I click and drag one of the four outer control elements, that allows me to scale the element while maintaining the current aspect ratio. But I can also click and drag any of the sides of the square to scale it disproportionately on the X or the Y axis. All the while, we get a real-time preview of any and all changes we make in Final Cut's viewer as well, so in context of our video, as opposed to having to step out to an external app. Moving the mouse outside of the square gives me this circular cursor with two arrows telling me that if I click and drag now, I'm able to rotate the element. And if I hold down the shift key while rotating, the rotation is even constrained to 15 degree increments. So without needing the parameters panel, we're already able to perform some of the essential changes in context. Since I think the vast majority of these parameters we see listed are pretty much self-explanatory, I won't bore everyone by going into each and every detail and with that deprive you of the fun of experimenting. But as a simple example, to darken just the source of my flare, I merely need to select the glow element at the top of my list and lower its brightness without affecting any other elements of my flare. Perfect. So up next, we want to look at the parameters panel, but specifically some of the more unique parameters that the one or other element has and the ones that maybe aren't quite as obvious as to what they actually do. So we'll just build our own simple flare and check out some parameters and maybe even some advanced animation techniques. So I hope you stick around. Thanks for watching and be sure to check the description for further infos and links.